Hey guys, Space Marine 658 here. Today we're going to be talking about how to change your player's pawn using the enhanced input system. Now, switching between different pawns um, can seem a little confusing when you want to make sure that your input uh, mapping context is used correctly, but it's actually relatively straightforward. Um, so we're going to quickly walk through an example. Let me show you how I use it here. So first we're going to start off with our player pawn. Now our player pawn it has some rules set up about how to switch to that other um, pawn, but we're going to ignore most of those because mostly we're going to focus on the actual function functionality of switching itself. Um, so basically the most important part is right here. What I've got is I've got a reference to that actual switcher. Um, now for me, my character actually creates these. I have drones that are actually created by my player. Now if you don't, um, you could do something like a line trace or a collision component to get a reference. But what you need is some kind of reference, um, even if it's just a generic reference, but some kind of reference to that pawn. Um, so here I have specifically a spectator pawn object reference. Now my my um, my actual thing I'm switching to is not actually a spectator pawn itself, but it is a class of a spectator pawn. Um, so that works just the same. Um, and so what what it does is it comes in here and it goes to this reference and it goes, is this a valid or not valid reference? The first time it runs, it's not going to be valid. Uh, and there are some other times where I invalidate it specifically, um, but the, by default, it's not going to be valid, so it's going to come and it's going to actually create one. So I have some rules here where I spawn it in a specific place, and then I actually spawn the actor itself, uh, which is of the BP fleet camera. And then from there, I tell the player controller um, to actually possess this pawn. And then I do some stuff with some HUD, and then I actually set that reference. Um, now what would happen is if I fire this event again, let's say I've switched away from the drone, now I want to switch back to it again. Um, if it's still a valid reference, it'll come up here and it'll look for this player controller and just set it to possess that existing pawn if it is valid. Uh, and then I do some more UI stuff as you can see here. Uh, so it's actually relatively simple from the player side. Um, it's just as simple as getting your controller and then doing the possess. Um, nothing too crazy there. Now, when you actually get over to the actor you want to possess, there's a couple things you're going to want to do. First thing you're going to want to do is you want to have this event possessed. The way you do that is if you right click and just type in um, possessed, you've got two events. You've got when possessed and when unpossessed. The reason why you want to do it on possessed despite spawning the actor is if you do it on begin play, uh, there's not necessarily a guarantee that you've actually switched over to possessing that actor yet. Um, so by doing it on possessed, um, you basically make it a little bit more clear. Um, now what happens is it pulls in the controller, that's your player controller. And here I'm specifically casting it because I, I eventually plan to save this reference and use this elsewhere. Um, but I don't necessarily have to. I could remove this. This isn't strictly necessary. Um, but I do some audio stuff here. And then over here, this is where I'm actually getting my player controller and setting the enhanced input parts up. So what you want to do is first you want to make sure it's valid. Um, it should be most of the time, but just for whatever reason, if it's not, you want to make sure you're handling that. Um, if it is valid, then I'm adding the mapping context and then registering, registering the input mapping context. Now that has to be done through the input user settings. Um, but essentially, you want to set this to whatever mapping context you want to use while you're possessing that um, pawn. So if it is a you know a whole different control scheme, you want to make sure that's what you're setting here because this is whatever control scheme you want to use here. Now, you do have to be careful. It needs to be a pawn and not an actor. There are ways to control actors, uh, but they're, they're a little bit different. Uh, but if you set it up correctly as a pawn, it should be as simple as... Um, adding these mapping contexts, registering them, and then any kind of HUD stuff you want to do afterwards. Um, but these are the big things. Now, once you've got those set up, um, all the events that you use in your main player, if you're using the same mapping context as the main player, um, you can use here as well. For example, interact double tap. I use that both in the main player um, when doing the switch to fleet view, but I also use it here. And the cool thing is because I possess and add the mapping context to this pawn, um, it'll only trigger in this pawn. Now, there's times where you want to do it. Um, for example, let's say you want to tell the player that you've done something 
while doing this control, let's say you're doing like a camera setup or something, right? Let's say you do want to pass that information back. Well, what you can do is, what I actually do is I save um, a reference to the original pawn. Now, the way I do this is I just made it an exposed on spawn um, event. And it's just a pawn of type pawn because um, you don't necessarily have to make it your actual player pawn. And by making it just a pawn, um, you save a bit of memory there because you're not I mean, you're going to have the player pawn loaded, so it's not strictly necessary. But I like to keep things as um, non-specific as I can. So if I ever change how I use this, I don't have to change everything because I changed, you know, what pawn type I'm using. Um, but as an example, right, so I've got this saved. So when I actually spawn this in, I actually tell it, you know, take the player's original pawn as the pawn. Um... And then I come over here, and this is where I can cycle the selection of the component that the, they're currently targeting. So if I do that, I have that all set up on my original pawn because that's where my real guns and stuff live. This pawn doesn't have any of that information. So rather than giving that pawn all of that information, which it really doesn't need, um, I just send it back to the original pawn. And the cool thing about this is by keeping it more generic and less specific, if I ever use this pawn, um, this camera view anywhere else where maybe, let's say, I don't have these kind of things set up, it's not going to break things. It'll send the message, but if it doesn't get used there, it just doesn't get used. Or I can even set it up to do something different. Uh, maybe there's a screen I have where I'm doing more complicated targeting. I could use it there as well and just use the same events, but use them in a different way. Um, but yeah. And the cool thing is with these kind of events is you can even do like um, implement, does object implement interface? And you can even have things like, you know, oh, does this do this? If so, do this or else do this. Um, so it's a really cool reason to use things like interfaces um, when you're when you're handling external pawns. Um, but yeah, that should be pretty much everything. Um, that's how you possess the alternate player, and then you'll have all these options for what to do with uh, either the new or old IMC. Uh, but if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments down below. But otherwise, good luck and good hunting.